Herbert Henry Asquith 1908-1916 Herbert Henry Asquith, born in 1852, embarked on a distinguished political career that spanned several decades and left an indelible mark on the British political landscape. A product of Balliol College, Oxford, Asquith's early career saw him establishing himself as a brilliant barrister, showcasing his intellectual acumen and oratorical skills. His foray into politics began in earnest when he won a parliamentary seat in 1886, representing the Liberal Party. Asquith's ascent within the Liberal Party was swift, owing to his sharp intellect and commitment to progressive ideals. By the turn of the 20th century, he had assumed various ministerial roles, including Home Secretary and Chancellor of the Exchequer. However, it was in 1908 that Asquith reached the pinnacle of his political career when he succeeded Sir Henry Campbell Bannerman as the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. Asquith's tenure at 10 Downing Street marked a critical period, characterized by both domestic reforms and the looming international tensions that would ultimately erupt into World War I. To truly appreciate Asquith's political legacy, one must contextualize his leadership within the broader canvas of the early 20th century political milieu in Britain. The era was marked by significant social, economic, and technological transformations that set the stage for the challenges and opportunities that would define Asquith's time in office. The early 1900s saw the zenith of the Edwardian era, a period characterized by industrialization, urbanization, and the growing influence of the British Empire. While the country experienced economic prosperity, social inequalities persisted, creating a fertile ground for political reforms. The suffragette movement was gaining momentum, seeking women's right to vote, and the labor movement was advocating for improved working conditions and labor rights. Against this backdrop, Asquith assumed leadership, inheriting a nation at the cusp of change. The political landscape was shaped by a delicate balance between liberal and conservative ideologies, with the Liberal Party under Asquith's leadership attempting to address pressing social issues while navigating the intricate web of international relations. Herbert Henry Asquith was born on September 12, 1852, into a well-educated and prosperous family. His father, Joseph Asquith, was a successful wool merchant, and his mother, Emily Willens, came from a family with a background in the legal profession. This privileged upbringing provided Asquith with access to quality education and a supportive environment that nurtured his intellectual curiosity. Asquith's early education took place at the City of London School, where his academic prowess became evident. His academic journey continued at Balliol College, Oxford, where he studied classics and developed a reputation for his exceptional debating skills. At Oxford, he immersed himself in the intellectual atmosphere, engaging with leading thinkers and forming connections that would prove invaluable in his future political career. Asquith's time at Oxford not only shaped his intellectual foundations but also honed the rhetorical skills that would later make him a formidable political orator. After completing his education, Asquith's entry into politics was a natural progression. In 1886, he contested and won a parliamentary seat as a liberal candidate for East Fife. This marked the beginning of his formal political career, where he quickly established himself as a rising star within the Liberal Party. Asquith's early political positions reflected his commitment to liberal principles and his advocacy for social reform. In the late 19th century, he held various ministerial roles, including serving as Home Secretary from 1892 to 1895 under Prime Minister William Gladstone. In this capacity, Asquith demonstrated a keen interest in criminal justice reform, addressing issues such as prison conditions and penal policy. His effectiveness in these roles contributed to his growing influence within the Liberal Party and earned him the respect of his peers. Asquith's political acumen and dedication to progressive ideals set the stage for his eventual ascension to higher office. Asquith's ascent within the Liberal Party ranks was marked by a combination of strategic maneuvering, intellectual prowess, and a commitment to key party principles. His rise to prominence within the party's leadership was steady, and by the turn of the century, he had become one of the key figures in the Liberal government. The retirement of Sir Henry Campbell Bannerman in 1908 created a leadership vacuum within the Liberal Party, and Asquith emerged as the natural successor. In April 1908, he assumed the position of Prime Minister, marking the pinnacle of his political career. 
His leadership style and ability to navigate the intricate web of British politics during a time of social and economic change would soon be put to the test as he grappled with the challenges of the early 20th century, both on the domestic front and in the realm of international affairs. Herbert Henry Asquith's ascension to the position of Prime Minister in 1908 was not only a personal triumph but also a critical moment in British political history. His journey to the Premiership began with the resignation of Sir Henry Campbell Bannerman due to health issues. As the Chancellor of the Exchequer and Leader of the House of Commons, Asquith was already a prominent figure within the Liberal Party and the government. In April 1908, Asquith seamlessly transitioned into the role of Prime Minister, having been the heir apparent within the party. His leadership was marked by a pragmatic approach and a commitment to liberal ideals, setting the tone for his tenure at a time when the nation was on the brink of significant social and political transformations. As Prime Minister, Asquith wasted no time in implementing a series of key policies and priorities aimed at addressing pressing issues facing the nation. One of his early and notable initiatives was the introduction of the People's Budget in 1909. Crafted by then-Chancellor of the Exchequer David Lloyd George, the budget was a groundbreaking piece of legislation that aimed to introduce progressive taxation, including a super tax on the wealthy, to fund social welfare programs. The budget also laid the groundwork for the establishment of the modern welfare state in Britain. The introduction of the people's budget was part of Asquith's broader commitment to social reforms. His government worked towards improving labor conditions, implementing measures to protect workers' rights, and addressing issues related to poverty and health care. These policies reflected Asquith's recognition of the need for a more equitable and socially responsible government in the face of changing societal expectations. Asquith faced a myriad of domestic challenges during his early years in office, navigating the complex dynamics of British society in the early 20th century. The suffragette movement, advocating for women's right to vote, gained momentum during this period, leading to increased social and political pressure. Asquith's response to the suffragette cause was initially conservative, creating tensions with activists who sought more immediate and comprehensive suffrage rights. Internationally, the world was on the brink of significant geopolitical shifts. Europe was witnessing the rise of tensions that would eventually erupt into World War I. Asquith skillfully managed Britain's foreign relations, balancing alliances and diplomatic efforts to maintain stability. However, the growing threat of war would soon overshadow his domestic agenda and test his leadership in unforeseen ways. Herbert Henry Asquith's tenure as Prime Minister from 1908 to 1916 was marked by a commitment to progressive social and economic reforms, reflecting the changing dynamics of British society in the early 20th century. Asquith recognized the need for transformative policies to address the challenges brought about by industrialization and social inequalities. One of the major social reforms during Asquith's leadership was the introduction of the National Insurance Act of 1911. This groundbreaking legislation established a system of health insurance for workers and provided financial support during times of illness or unemployment. The act represented a significant step towards the creation of a comprehensive welfare state, offering a safety net for the working class. Additionally, Asquith's government pursued measures to improve housing conditions and public health. The Housing and Town Planning Act of 1909 aimed to address the inadequate living conditions in urban areas, setting the stage for future housing reforms. These initiatives demonstrated Asquith's commitment to enhancing the quality of life for ordinary citizens and creating a more equitable society. One of the defining moments of Asquith's premiership was the introduction of the People's Budget in 1909, a fiscal policy crafted by Chancellor of the Exchequer David Lloyd George. The budget aimed to fund social reforms by implementing progressive taxation, including a super tax on the wealthy and a land tax. The revenue generated from these measures was earmarked for initiatives such as old age pensions, unemployment benefits, and naval expansion. The People's Budget faced strong opposition from the Conservative Party and the House of Lords, leading to a constitutional crisis. However, Asquith's determination prevailed, and the budget became law in 1910 after the Parliament Act restricted the powers of the House of Lords to veto financial legislation. The budget marked a significant shift towards a more progressive tax system and laid the groundwork for the development of the modern welfare state in Britain. The impact of the people's budget was profound, 
as it signaled a departure from traditional laissez-faire economic policies and established a precedent for increased state intervention to address social inequalities. It also contributed to the shaping of a political landscape that would later witness the expansion of social welfare programs and the establishment of the National Health Service NHS, in the post-World War II era. Asquith's approach to labor relations and social justice was characterized by a delicate balance between the interests of labor and capital. While his government implemented social reforms, Asquith sought to maintain a level of equilibrium that allowed for economic growth while addressing the concerns of the working class. As Prime Minister, Asquith faced labor strikes and disputes, particularly in industries such as coal mining and transportation. His government engaged in negotiations with labor leaders, attempting to find resolutions that would prevent prolonged strikes and disruptions. The establishment of the National Insurance Act, with its provisions for unemployment benefits, was part of Asquith's strategy to alleviate the economic hardships faced by workers during times of industrial unrest. As Herbert Henry Asquith steered the ship of the United Kingdom through the early 20th century, a gathering storm in Europe cast an ominous shadow over his leadership. The continent was experiencing rising tensions, primarily fueled by a complex web of political alliances, militarism, and imperial ambitions. The assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand in 1914 served as the catalyst, plunging Europe into the depths of World War I. Asquith faced the monumental challenge of navigating the nation through this unprecedented global conflict. The outbreak of war in 1914 compelled him to mobilize British forces and commit the nation to a conflict that would profoundly reshape the geopolitical landscape. Asquith grappled with the complexities of alliance politics, seeking to balance British interests with the needs of her allies, including France and Russia. The war presented challenges on multiple fronts, from military strategies and resource allocation to the immense toll on the civilian population. Simultaneously, Asquith faced a significant domestic challenge in the form of the Irish Home Rule question. The question of whether Ireland should have self-governance had long been a contentious issue, and Asquith's government attempted to address it through the Third Home Rule Bill. The bill aimed to grant Ireland limited self-government within the United Kingdom. However, the passage of the bill was delayed due to the outbreak of World War I. The postponement created tensions, particularly with Irish nationalists who saw an opportunity for progress. This delay contributed to heightened political unrest in Ireland, and events such as the Easter Rising in 1916 underscored the complexities of the Irish question during Asquith's leadership. Asquith's handling of the Irish Home Rule question reflected the intricate balancing act required to maintain stability both domestically and internationally during a time of unprecedented global conflict. The Irish issue remained a divisive and unresolved matter, setting the stage for future challenges in British-Irish relations. The assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand in 1914 triggered a cascade of events that led to the outbreak of World War I. As Germany's invasion of Belgium unfolded, Britain found itself drawn into the conflict. Herbert Henry Asquith, as Prime Minister, faced the monumental task of responding to the crisis and leading the nation through a war of unprecedented scale and brutality. Asquith's response to Britain's entry into World War I was characterized by a commitment to the defense of democratic principles and the protection of British interests. In his speech to the House of Commons on August 6, 1914, Asquith articulated the government's rationale for entering the war, emphasizing the need to safeguard the liberties of small nations and protect Britain's security. The decision to support France and Russia against the Central Powers marked a critical juncture in British history and set the stage for a protracted and grueling conflict. While Asquith initially enjoyed popularity and support as the leader who steered Britain into the war with a sense of duty and resolve, the prolonged nature of the conflict took its toll on his political standing. As the war dragged on, the public's patience waned, and dissatisfaction grew over issues such as the high casualty rates, wartime profiteering, and the economic strains on the home front. Internal divisions within the Liberal Party, particularly over the question of conscription, further eroded Asquith's political support. The anti-war faction, led by David Lloyd George, gained prominence, challenging Asquith's leadership. As the war became increasingly unpopular, calls for a more dynamic and assertive wartime leadership grew louder. In December 1916, facing mounting pressure and internal dissent, Asquith resigned as Prime Minister. 
His departure marked the end of an era and the beginning of a new phase in British politics. Lloyd George succeeded him, bringing a different approach to wartime leadership. Amidst mounting pressures, Herbert Henry Asquith took the momentous decision to resign as Prime Minister on December 5, 1916. His resignation marked the end of his tenure as the head of the Liberal government and represented a significant shift in British political leadership. The changing political landscape saw David Lloyd George succeeding Asquith as Prime Minister. Lloyd George, known for his energetic and pragmatic approach, brought a different style of leadership to Downing Street. His government was characterized by a coalition between the Liberals and the Conservatives, reflecting a consensus-driven approach during a critical phase of the war. Asquith's resignation symbolized the challenges of leadership during a period of profound national and international upheaval. While he had steered the nation through the early stages of World War I, the changing circumstances and the need for a more dynamic response prompted a transition in leadership. The events of Asquith's last year in office left an indelible mark on British political history, setting the stage for the evolving dynamics of wartime governance and the subsequent reconstruction of post-war Britain. Herbert Henry Asquith's tenure as Prime Minister, spanning from 1908 to 1916, was a period defined by significant social, economic, and geopolitical shifts. Asquith, a prominent figure in British politics, assumed leadership during a time of burgeoning challenges, including the escalating tensions in Europe that would lead to World War I. As Prime Minister, Asquith championed social reforms, navigated the complexities of wartime governance, and faced internal divisions within the Liberal Party. Asquith's leadership during the critical period from 1908 to 1916 holds significance in the annals of British history. His tenure witnessed the culmination of the Edwardian era, marked by socio-economic transformations and the zenith of the British Empire. Asquith's leadership was a response to the evolving demands of a changing society, with a focus on progressive ideals and the need for social and economic reforms. The challenges posed by World War I and the Irish Home Rule question underscored the complexity of Asquith's leadership role during a time of both domestic and international upheaval. His ability to navigate these challenges, albeit with criticisms and internal divisions, reflected the resilience of British political institutions and the adaptability required of leaders during transformative periods. In conclusion, Herbert Henry Asquith's tenure as Prime Minister left an indelible mark on the course of British history. His policies, decisions, and leadership style contributed to the shaping of modern Britain and the foundations of the welfare state. Asquith's legacy, while nuanced, stands as a testament to the challenges and opportunities faced by leaders during critical junctures, leaving a lasting impact on the socio-political landscape of the United Kingdom. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it informative, please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel for more content like this in the future.